Behind me is Snake Pit, a skinny feature we built back in 2019, and I'm sorry to say, it is nearing the end of its safe, usable life. We took basically rotting dead trees, cut them down, sliced them open, and screwed cedar planks to them. Most of the cedar planks are doing fine, but the trees themselves are really starting to break apart, planks are coming loose, and it's just becoming a hazard. We're gonna start with something new, and I wanna build something better, something even more fun. Snake Pit in its current state is sort of two lines. There's one that goes under a tree, and there's one that forces you to jump over a tree. Even really good riders who have visited have been sort of freaked out by it just a little bit because they've never seen anything like it. There is a gap off of a skinny, so you have to be really dialed before you hit that and you have to make sure you have the speed. And of course, there's like a growing tree in the middle that you're jumping over. So it's small, but it packs a punch. So we're gonna start by taking all the cedar planks off and getting this old feature out of the way. Unsurprising, wood rots from the outside. Fungus, ants, the elements get in from the outside and they work their way in. We have another feature here that's made from elm. Elm doesn't last very long outside at all, yet it's still standing because it's up off the ground. So between the sun beating on it, the steep incline just shedding the water, it's lasted pretty nicely and if we took the bark off that thing, it would last even longer. Truth be told, I've never actually seen a snake here, and it makes sense. This stuff is basically soil. There's no place to hide in it unless you're a worm. So I'm gonna pull this mess back and get down to the clay, so we can set some posts in here and get the new feature up off the ground. With the work area prepped, it's time to get our materials in order. That means busting out the old skidding rig Kevin and I built. It still does exactly what we designed it for, and honestly, Moving this stuff without it would be a giant mess. The Alaskan Mill. It's an invaluable tool for creating custom timbers on site. But believe me, it's not fun. The dust, the noise, the fumes, and that comes after you fiddle with it for 30 minutes. But for this job, I really appreciate what it can do. Now it's time to actually build something here. We're gonna keep everything that made the old feature so fun and iconic, including the old planks and fasteners. But we're gonna make the whole thing scarier. Digging with the auger is a workout, but it's way easier than post hole diggers and the hole is really nice. We're not gonna have to do a lot of work to get that post sat in there real nice. I'm using these fat treated fence posts from Tractor Supply and I think they look really cool. So this is right next to a tree, and if we keep cutting away roots, we might kill the tree. This is only gonna be like maybe a foot and a half off the ground, so I don't need a big like telephone pole to hold this up. So I think we can hammer a post in the ground and just kind of shift the roots aside. All of these are beautiful. This one looks very functional. Cheers from California, Kevin. Okay, let's see how the head of the post is doing. <laughs> wow, all it's got is black paint on it. I'll need to do a fair bit of cutting and shaping on these posts, which my 16 inch battery powered chainsaw is perfect for. But it needs a new motor, and I've been procrastinating, so we have no choice but to dive into a completely different project.
They don't make this 40 volt saw anymore, but they do sell replacement parts. And given the amount of batteries I still have for it, it pays to do a repair every few years to keep it running. I can barely even get a four inch screw through that thing. I sorta had a plan, but ended up cutting these notches for no reason. I realized we can have everything bare down on top of these posts and have a much simpler design. On the new feature, anything that makes contact with the ground will be rot resistant, and everything else will be debarked and held high off the ground so it can drip dry. If I blow all the leaves off and keep it moss and fungus free, it should last a good while and take much less maintenance than a dirt feature. I would have loved to reuse the lip from the original feature, but we're gonna need something a little bit bigger this time. So now comes the guesswork. I carved out a lip, it's a 10 and a half foot radius, so it's very good for mountain bikes, but I have to attach it here, kind of set the angle, and try and estimate what the best way to get over this gap is gonna be. All right, that, uh, that better work. This thing is framed out. I considered trying to ride it in its current state, but this is high consequence. It's kind of what I wanted. I wanted something a little crazier. We're not gonna tame down Snake Pit. But there's one other thing that I wanna do before we put it together, is connect it to the old beeline. Well, on the bright side, it should cool off a little bit, but I guess it's gonna be real muddy. The upper part where you, it's kind of blind and you gotta go over, I'm making it wider. I'm using the wider planks here so that you can kind of get yourself into position, take the outside line, and then it's gonna get really narrow on the jump. has a tendency to crack. Rather than pre-drill it, I'm like drilling down a little bit and then running the drill in reverse to kind of make a hole and then putting it down there just saves me a little bit of time. The concept is the same, the planks are the same, and we even use the old fasteners. Even the old beeline hasn't changed as it seems to have a bit of life left in it, but everything else is different. 
Snake Pit 2.0 looks a lot more interesting and it's a lot sketchier. The lip is bigger, the gap is bigger, and the entrance to the beeline was an afterthought. That should make it real challenging. Now we just need to wait for this thing to dry so we can test it out. Kevin, what do you think? I mean, it's bigger. And I got an audience, so Kevin's here and Drew from Lone Wolf, they're here to drive me to the hospital if this doesn't work. And so I'm gonna try the beeline first, and then we're gonna send the new gap and see if she goes. It always comes back down to this, doesn't it? Here we go. Okay. Oh. Yes. Wow. You come over that thing and it's blocking it all and then you don't see it until you're on it. Sketchy momentum here with a sliding tire on it. You yeah. you had enough speed if you would have just gone straight, which is gonna be way easier than having to get onto that. You you greased it, no problem. So now uh, I'm gonna do the jump and see if the the math works. Yeah, what else, what else is we gotta do it? in a little bit. I was up there and I was like, I need to crank, but I said I was going with it. <laughs> Which is the dumbest logic ever. So I'm gonna come over with a little bit more authority this time. So the most different thing about Snake Pit 2.0 is that you come up to it blind because now you have to go up this thing so you don't see the skinny line you're about to ride until you get over it and then you also have to plan really quick because you see what you're about to ride for the first time. <laughs> so Drew just turned in his rental bike Kevin just said, hey, I think my bike fits you. I mean, it's a bike, right? How different can it be? <laughs> Buddy. Yes. That was awesome. You got the full burn peak experience. Oh my god. I yeah. knew I could do it, but I, you totally. also don't want to be the guy who comes here and crashes. Yeah. That guy has on a video. Here. He came here, yeah. Snake Pit 2.0. It's still sketchy, and it still doesn't have any snakes. But that doesn't make falling off of it any more pleasant. Oh! I think the second iteration of Snake Pit is a lot more fun than the first. And in true Burn Peak fashion, taking the beeline isn't much easier. Drew and Brian from Lone Wolf were out here this weekend doing a documentary. So keep an eye out for that. And have a look at this feature playlist to see other things we've built here on Burn Peak. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.